everyone, Bohertov, and welcome to today's seminar, uh, Medical Device and Med Telemedicine, Overview, Trends, Opportunity, and Regulations. My name is Beatrice Tagliates, and I'll be today's moderator. Uh, I work for the marketing teams here at Confindustria Dispositivi Medici, and I'm very glad to be uh, hosting the session today. Uh, I'm pleased to introduce to today's speakers. But before I hand the mic over to them, I have a few housekeeping items to cover about the presentation and the webinar platform. First, today's webinar will be available on demand after the live sessions, and then today's presentation could be available as well. Uh, next, we love to hear from you during the, this, today's webinar. So if you have any questions for our speakers, please feel free to send them via chat, indicating to whom the question is addressed. Uh, we'll be answering your question at the end of the session, but if you don't get your question during the, the, this morning, we'll be sure to follow up to afterwards. Now, I'm pleased to introduce to today's speakers. I want to offer my greeting to Italian Ambassador, His Excellency Mr. Benedetti, and the Chairman of the Israel Export Institute, Mr. Baruch. It is also a pleasure for me to thank and welcome the speaker of this session, Mr. Barnea, Mr. Porri, and Mr. Capece. Lastly, allow me to thank the ICE colleagues, Fabrizio Camastra, Emanuela, Cicolella, and Doris Ziposki, and the Israel Export Institute colleague, Alan Mendoza, Sabine Sigal, Mando Alfasa, for all the effort and the invaluable contribution they provide during this month of the preparation for, of this seminar. Before leaving the floor to our ambassador for the institutional greeting, Allow me to briefly introduce uh, today's topic. Underline the importance of the issues that will be discussed today, especially in a moment that see the medical devices and main character of the worldwide scene in a daily fight against the COVID-19. I would like to define this morning journey by outlining its goal and what we want to take home from the bilateral uh, discussion, starting from the promoter mission in this particular moment which is implementing a series of initiatives to support businesses as a result of the health emergency. Today, we'd like to lay the foundation to create a synergy between the two countries and among the, com the companies with a view to exporting products and services or developing distribution agreement between the parties, technological collaboration and attractive investment. We will try to define the borders of the two markets, the Italian and the Israeli one, from an economic and regulatory point of view, looking at what will be the next market boundaries according to the entry into force of the European Medical Device Regulation by May 2021 on one side, but on the other, considering the impact of the COVID emergency. We'll try, we need to try uh, to stop and look at what the scenario that a COVID pandemic is deeply influencing and changing. It is an enormous challenge for safety of people, but also the opportunity to rethink our present and, improvement for, and, and an improvement for our future. So today is de facto the first step into our respective markets with an overview of macroeconomics aspect and a focus on uh, regulatory aspects. So without any further ado, I'd like to kick things off by welcoming His Excellency, Mr. Benedetti, Ambassador of Italy to Israel. Thank you very much, Beatrice. Dear participants, I'm very happy to launch today's webinar, which is a solid proof that uh, in the present situation, even if we cannot pretend that business is as usual, we can certainly confirm that we are fully in business. I wish to express my personal gratitude to the Italian trade agency, Confindustria Dispositivi Medici, and the Israeli Export Institute that put so much time and effort to support and ensure the success of this Israeli-Italian webinar. The Italian medical device industry encompasses roughly 4,000 companies, more than 70, 76,000 employees, and a domestic market of 11.4 billion euros. The last relevant number is that export of 
made in Italy medical devices amounts to more than 5 billion euros with a 5% annual growth rate. In this field, the Italian industry is considered highly sophisticated and is based on innovative high-tech medical technologies. Let me switch now to telemedicine. With the COVID-19 emergency, the interest and demand for telemedicine increased considerably among medical doctors and patients. According to a survey conducted in June 2020, 11%, only 11% of medical doctors reported that they used telemedicine before the pandemic. Today, the share of general doctors that would be interested in carrying out tele-examinations tele reached 54%, and the interest for the use of telemedicine in the future appears to be generally high, especially for monitoring patients' health status. Against this backdrop, and considering that Israeli competence and industrial technological capabilities are also very strong in both sectors, today's event represents a significant opportunity to put forward what each country has to offer and what it needs with a specific goal of finding and exploiting all opportunities offered by a bilateral cooperation in research and development, industrial production, and market expansion. We are on the eve of a new revolution, the big data and artificial intelligence revolution that will change several paradigms of our way of life in the next 10 years. In the health sector, this revolution has already started and will strongly accelerate in both our countries where human health systems are very advanced and represent a strong component of the social security policy. This perspective is one more important element to take into consideration in promoting and pursuing the bilateral cooperation in the field of medical devices and telemedicine. Before giving the virtual floor to the chairman of the Israeli Export Institute, uh, Adiv Baruch, thank you, Adiv. Let me just share with you a bit of information in two useful, pro of two useful programs that we have developed in the framework of the bilateral agreement on scientific, technological, and industrial cooperation to support bilateral cooperation projects. The first program is a call for industrial joint projects. It is published every year and is aimed at bringing together companies from both countries to develop innovative prototypes also in the health sector. The two governments support the call with an annual budget of around 1.6 million euros that usually finance six two-year projects. The call is currently open and the application must, must be submitted by November 25. The second program which is relevant is Accelerate in Israel. It is a tool to support a three month period of acceleration for promising Italian startups in various fields, including health tech. This program is in its second year and with the contribution of the Italian trade agency and other institutions, we have managed to significantly expand the budget to hopefully support around 40, 50 startups. We received 53 applications that we are now evaluating, including nine specifically in the health sector. I invite all of you to consider our economic and scientific offices at the Italian Embassy and the Italian Trade Agency office in Tel Aviv at your disposal for any sort of support you may need. Our mission is to find, promote, and support any possible joint cooperation that will benefit our companies, our economies, and our societies. This is a goal that in the medical sector is even more important today under the present circumstances. Thank you very much for your attention and participation. I wish all of you a very interesting discussion. Thank you.
you, thank you, Ambassador. Now I leave the floor to Mr. Adiv Baruk, Chairman of the Israel Export Institute. Well, good morning. Thank you, Your Excellency, my dear friend, Mr. Benditti, the Ambassador of Italy to Israel. Thank you, Ms. Taliatesta, for setting it up and being here with us, moderating it. It's always amazing to see you. Thank you. And I want to, of course, welcome all the guests and participants, and in particular, the speakers, my dear friend Asab Barnea, who will cover uh, the market from the medical devices. He's the one to do it. And um, of course, we have Mr. Pori and Mr. Capece. Well, thank you for being here. But most important is His Excellency, the ambassador. As we discussed a few months ago, if you remember, during the first close down, uh, we met and we tried to set up a program saying, well, the world has changed. COVID-19 caught all of us unexpected. And all of a sudden, all the shows, the trade shows, the traveling, everything stopped completely came to a complete stop. And I spoke to the ambassador and said, we have to move immediately to the digital space in order to continue sharing the momentum of building and continue building the relationship between Italy and Israel, because it's crucial. The two countries have been standing next to each other for many, many years. And the bilateral trade, although it's growing, it does not even reflect the true potential that our two countries have. We have many commonalities. We have more commonalities and differences than we can even think of. And that means that when COVID-19 cut the world and actually changed many, many paradigms in our generation, one thing we have learned, it's cooperation and sharing. Because to fight the uncertainty we have to share the know-how, we have to share the knowledge. We both have the experiences from different angles. Let's share it together, not only for the benefit of our nations, but by joining forces, we can even produce and show to the world better solution. And that will open new markets when we join forces. And that was the idea. And I thank you, Ambassador, for supporting when Sabine and the rest of the team from the Israeli Export Institute, together with the group and the association uh, in Italy, and work with your team to set up those webinars. So let's take the advantage that even if we don't meet, we should continue building the bilateral trade between our countries. It's crucial, it's important. And as we know that from the global economy, the economy will shrink this year over 4.4%. That is one of the fourth major crises since 1870. It's a crisis. The world global trading is going to shrink by 15%. That means the competition is getting more tougher. The competitive is becoming even cutthroat. And the only way to compete in this world today is by bringing the innovation and the advantages that we can bring together and joining forces. And let's try to make for both of our economies, the Italian and Israel economy, that at least 2021 will be able to cover everything that has slowed down in 2020. So I want to wish all of us a great fruitful webinar and hope that it will continue to build our bilateral trade as we hope for it. Thank you all. Thank you, Mr. Baruk. Now I'm pleased to leave the floor to Mr. Barnia, CEO of the Sanada Ventures and Chairman of the Life Science Advisory Board at the Israel Export Institute, who will introduce us to Israel Market Overview. Thank you, Mr. Barnia. Thank you and uh, good morning, everybody. Mr. Ambassador and the Chairman of the Israeli Export Institute. My name is Asaf Bonaire. Indeed, I'm the CEO of uh, Sanara Ventures, which is a joint venture of uh, Philips and Teva, Teva Pharmaceutical. Um, and uh, I'd like to share with you an overview of the Israeli industry, and mostly as indicated by Adiv, to focus on innovation and mostly on digital health and telemedicine, as the Ambassador has mentioned. 
So uh, if that's okay, I'd like to share with you the presentation now. Um, let me just, just making sure that you can see the presentation. Can, it, can you? Yes, we are. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So it was discussed by many now that uh, we're facing a new normal, also in digital health and in, in uh, telemedicine, but, but in the way we treat people and the way we deliver care. And uh, I, I thought that uh, it would be um, uh, more productive to really go through a bit of the structure of the Israeli healthcare ecosystem, but then dive into the, uh, into the innovation part, into digital health startups. Is it, is it changing? Just making sure that the slides are changing? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So let's, uh, with this global overview, and it's redundant now to repeat whatever was discussed about COVID-19, let's say uh, as if we were doing Google Earth, and let's drill down now into Israel. And I thought that the best uh, person to uh, indicate Asaf, what is so... Yeah. Asaf, put it in show mode. You're in, it's not in the presentation mode. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't change. Uh, I just want to make sure that everybody can see that and sometimes it gets stuck. Can, can you now see this picture? Perfectly. It doesn't change. Yeah. It, it doesn't change because you have two monitors. Yeah. On the display setting, just push the um, the duplicate. So you'll see the full yeah, screen. Yeah, double screen. On the display setting, push on it. Click on the display setting itself. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, duplicate slideshow, yeah. Okay, Perfect. so Perfect. Our, our former uh, president, there, Mr. Shimon Perez, was probably the best to, uh, um, to identify what is so special about, about Israel. And what he said uh, about 20 years ago, that the Jewish uh, greatest contribution to the history is dissatisfaction. We're a nation born to be discontent. We're always discontent in Israel. And this is actually a major, major driver to uh, push for innovation and to change and look for better solutions. Uh, before we dive into, uh, into uh, healthcare specifically, just as a reminder that uh, out of Israel, we had been seeing amazing innovations like companies such as Waze, uh, Waze which has been, uh, bought by, uh, has been bought by Google, um, and the uh, Mobileye, which was bought by uh, Intel for $15 billion, the disk or key, the memory disk that we've all been using for 20 years came out out of Israel and so many other uh, innovations, some of which related to healthcare and some are not. But this is why we were defined as the startup nation for so many years. In terms of uh, uh, supporting uh, uh, different geographies and the economy in different geographies, it was uh, published a few months ago that uh, uh, Israeli companies uh, boosted New York's economy, uh, the state of New York, by nearly $34 billion. This is an amazing achievement. Over 500 companies, Israeli companies, which are located in New York area and in the state of New York, not just in the city, boosted that uh, state economy by $34 billion. The um, wonder that we've been seeing for decades and decades, over 300 multinationals in Israel, uh, companies that you can see here, Google, uh, Motorola, Siemens, Johnson & Johnson, Toshiba, uh, and others that have been playing a major role through incubators, accelerators, R&D centers in Israel. But if we are now focusing on healthcare, we have over 50 multinational companies in Israel, healthcare related, which are focusing on or tapping into the Israel innovation and collaboration uh, to search for new solutions. Going a little bit towards the, uh, the, uh, the uh, ability to provide the services, the healthcare services, we have over 50 hospitals in Israel and considered to be a, a very known prestigious uh, uh, ecosystem in terms of uh, the services that have been provided. Uh, probably to indicate that, uh, Sheba Tel Hashomer Hospital, which is probably the largest hospital in Israel, was chosen by the Newsweek. Uh, last year to be among the top best hospitals worldwide. So a high level of, uh, of uh, medical services in Israel. And we're looking for we're moving from the hospitals towards the community services. So unlike some other countries whereby you have the patients and the providers as, as hospitals, in Israel we have four HMOs uh, and they are, all of the population in Israel has to be covered by one. So each and every citizen in Israel has to be covered by at least uh, uh, choosing at least uh, for, 
the beginning uh, one of those HMOs, then you can shift if you want, but you have to be uh, uh, connected to one of those HMOs. Um, so for instance, Haklalit, the general sick one, which is the second largest HMO worldwide, by the way, with 4.5 patients. So half of the population in Israel out of the 9 million people is uh, related to the Klalit. The second largest would be Maccabi, the Maccabi HMO with about 2, 2.2 million patients. And the other two, which are um, not as big, but these are the, uh, the HMOs. And if we are looking into the, uh, the uh, healthcare expenditures, so on an average base on the right side of this slide, you can see that definitely unlike in the US where the uh, uh, expenditures, healthcare related expenditures are almost 18, 19%, which is amazingly high. In Israel, it's on an average between seven to 8% constantly. Uh, and we're definitely striving to, to reduce that and be more effective and, and more uh, agile in terms of the services that are being provided. We are facing, aside from the COVID-19, uh, all of the global challenges in healthcare. This is uh, as, as in many, many other countries. And this is why the call for action also on behalf of the govern government was essential. So basically, uh, this is happening for the last at least five to 10 years, but now specifically for the last two to three years, not just becoming a startup nation as we were defined, but also a digital health nation. And now I would like to share with you why. First of all, we have started with a company like over well, close to 10 years ago called DB Motion. DB Motion was a startup that actually connected the, the hospitals and the electronic medical records that we have for the last 30 years connected them into not just one system, but rather into few. And now it's even improving and connecting the community services towards the hospital. So if a patient goes in, it doesn't matter if you go to this hospital or the next time you, you're going to go to another hospital, your electronic med medical records are connected and then the physician can really see uh, the, the, the history of that specific patient. There's been services that are being provided by the HMOs, uh, video chats 24-7 with the nurse, with the physician, both the uh, Maccabi Sick Fund and the uh, Haklali General Sick Fund. More specifically, about five years ago, uh, those HMOs have started to work with startup companies. So for instance, two non-collaboration, one of which on the right side with the Maccabi uh, HMOs and a company called Medial Early Sign. Basically, they were looking into providing a, a uh, screening services for collateral uh, cancer by actually looking into an AI technology brought by a startup named Mid Medial Early Science and looking into the hemoglobin levels of a patient. And what was detected by them is even within the every year that we've been doing uh, hemoglobin levels, uh, and they seem to be within the normal range, within the boundaries. But when you look into the trend the last four or five years, all of a sudden you can see potentially a decline with hemoglobin levels. And even though this would fall within the normal range on a year by year case, once you look into a four or five years trend, you see a decline. And that decline may indicate the beginning, the onset of collateral cancer. And this is our collaboration using an AI and uh, brought by the startup company and the Maccabi HMOs. And now they're doing screening. So whoever needs to go for colonoscopy and most people ignore the fact that they need to go to colonoscopy, now there's a red flag which is being raised by a simple blood test and approaching those people and saying, listen, there's a chance that you have to do that because we have found that there's a uh, decline with your homoglobin level for the last four or five years. So when we talk about big data and the, the machine learning, AI, all of those applications, even such a relatively simple solution may be of a great benefit for that. So this is a, a very good example that started some five years ago. And today it's an ongoing service as one of many that those HMOs are providing to the Israeli uh, healthcare ecosystem. Also in terms of uh, recognition, um, taking the electronic medical records for the last 25 years and taking the government support, which has decided two years ago to inject $300 million in order to validate in Israel new digital health technologies within hospitals. So this is a great support by the government as of two years ago, as I said before. And many of our companies, including those that are having Sanara Capital, companies that we have invested in, can now approach and subsidize those pilots within the, uh, uh, within the ecosystem by the government by approaching and supporting that. Um, one of the things that we also did in the Export Institute, for instance, as part of the government support, 
is to step into new digital health conferences, not just medical devices. So for instance, the Export Institute was playing a part in the medical conference in, in, in Germany for the last 20 years. We have a big national booth in Germany, but we have decided some three years ago, actually to move into digital health conferences. And probably the, the largest one is the HIMSS in the United States, um, which every other year, one year is in, in Vegas and the other year is in, uh, in uh, Orlando. But we have now have a national booth with about 30, 40 companies, startup companies that are coming and attending the Israeli national booth in the HIMSS. So it's also innovation on the side of the government, on the side of us as the Export Institute, to step in new domains, to look into the so-called new oceans and the opportunities for the uh, communities in Israel. Um, just an overview of the, uh, of, uh, of the verticals within digital health, so decision support, remote monitoring, uh, digital therapeutics, patient engagement. There are over 500 startup companies in Israel which are focusing on digital health. So this is an amazing number. Uh, it's been said that we are probably in Israel the second largest hub of digital health innovation outside of the US with uh, those 500 startup companies, some of which are now becoming global companies, really providing services in Europe, in the States, as well as in the Asian market. So this is, this is quite nice to see that. Just to give you a few of those companies, uh, this uh, uh, guy, his, his name is Zeb Ofek. He's actually the guy that uh, built and, and, and then sold uh, DB Motion as the first exit out of Israel, the one that I presented before to all scripts for the very first exit some seven years ago for $235 million. So he's now a serial entrepreneur. He has built a new company called MD Clone now with uh, unanimous data that has been used by the providers, by the hospitals in Israel. So he comes back and back and reinvent uh, solutions uh, and the clone that have raised over $40 million and providing services uh, for uh, uh, addressing uh, uh, patient privacy and other, and other which is related to data. Some other companies which are doing relatively on the same area, uh, companies such as Duality, and some of those companies are working with Walmart, Microsoft, and others, all of which are looking into the privacy issues, into the uh, the ability to use data more and more without infringement of privacy matters. In terms of uh, disease management, uh, Dr. Kira Radinsky, previously the, the uh, CTO of uh, eBay in Israel and sold her company when she was 28 years old, the very first company. She came up now with a, a company called Diagnostic Robotics. Uh, it's basically to optimize care management and to change the emergency room and basically look into triage application and triage processes. Same goes with K-Health. K-Health uh, raised over close to $100 million by now, gl uh, working globally. And K-Health is actually looking into the symptoms and using AI, identifying actually the symptoms by physician. So take the know-how of physician, implementing that into the patient, their ability to understand what the symptoms actually could be related to. So it's another application which was brought to the global market by K-Health out of Israel. A company out of uh, Sanara Ventures, the one that I'm running, we have invested in a company called TaylorMed. TaylorMed is actually addressing the US market for uh, cancer patients who cannot afford to pay the 20%, the out-of-pocket expenses, which most of the patients in the US, not just cancer, but other chronic disease patients needs to pay. And this software, which is aimed to hospitals, is actually doing an optimization of those out-of-pocket expenses whereby people are losing their homes and their families because they, they cannot afford to pay the 20% for uh, chemotherapy, surgeries, and, and, and CT scans. And as such, this is an optimization process which has been done by TaylorMed to the providers, which are providing the services to the patients in the US, but they cannot collect the money. And as such, it's a win-win both for the patients as well as for the hospitals who are today losing four to five billion dollars every year just in the US. So they do provide the services, uh, treatment, of cancer, but they cannot collect the, the money out of the patients who are losing their homes, as I said before. Another company on the telemedicine side and remote uh, uh, monitoring is a company which is called Healthy.io. Healthy.io is a urine test, which you can buy, I'm not sure if in Italy, but definitely in London, if you walk down the Oxford Street and others, uh, in order for us to avoid uh, what they define as the walk of shame. You know, when we take those plastic bags, plastic boxes, with a urine test and we submit it to the nurse or to the physician, why not do it at home? So Healthy.io came up with a, the very first uh, diagnostic tool to do it with your cellular phone and was the very first 
company to have a FDA approval for the camera itself, not for the overall cell phone, but for the camera as a diagnostic tool. And now you can buy that uh, kit in, a, in any drugstore and basically run the urine test at home without the need to go to the, uh, to the uh, physician. Um, also in terms of remote monitoring, Tide to Care, which uh, has built a standalone device uh, for a, a remote diagnostic, basically, and also uh, My Home Doc, a company out of Sanara Ventures that we have invested in called My Home Doc. Similar idea, but it's based on the smartphone, actually, and leveraging the smartphone case capabilities, and by that, actually, uh, entering the market with a, a very cost-effective price. So My Home Doc came up with a device with four sensors integrated into one piece. You can see it in the middle. It's a statoscope, pulse oximeter, otoscope, and thermometer, all of which are run by an application on your smartphone. You can do it on a synchronized or asynchronized mode. We are now adding some data uh, and AI uh, capabilities into that. And any mother with a child or any elderly people who is taking, being taken care of by care providers and caregivers could use this remotely from elderly people home, from uh, patients home, or from a, uh, late, at, late at night, even if it's a hospital and the nurse needs to talk to the physician who wants to listen to the sound of the of the stethoscope so we we shall be seeing more and more of those solutions such as my home doc this is a company i'm the active chairman of this company and we're actually pushing that now to uh towards commercialization in over 50 to 20 countries which are looking for similar solutions of the israel we have a lot of expertise related to the army unfortunately so those guys in the middle came up from a very special unit in the israeli army and their ability to take image analytics capabilities which are related to analytics of uh, unmanned aircraft and basically translating that into medical applications. So Nuclear is a company uh, that knows how to train system to see, as they say, but to see and understand what, whatever they are seeing. And basically they came up with a, a pathology uh, capabilities and for the optimization of drugs towards, uh, uh, actually towards uh, pharma companies. I'm just uh, uh, making a brief indication of each company to give you a taste and not diving into the bits and bytes of each company. If we're looking into microbiome, which is now becoming a very popular globally to, to understand the, the major impact of microbiome, the germs within our body. So a very good company to, uh, to come up with a solution related to that and using an AI for the analytics of the microbiome in each and every patient to avoid diabetics or to take a better uh, decision before getting diabetics, uh, patient who are at risk. So day two has come up with a with an analytic with a software basically that analyzes uh, the outcomes of those tests. And now they have raised capital from Johnson and Johnson. They are providing the services in Israel and going globally with their microbiome solution. So day two uh, with a collaboration of Medtronic and a few others. Uh, and if we are addressing different market segment in, term, in terms of prescriptions, avoiding uh, prescription mistakes. So Medaware came up by Dr. Gidi Stein, who is a physician, practicing physician, who have seen some eight years ago, a child who was uh, wrongly uh, uh, given uh, the wrong medication at the age of nine and actually passed away. So that was an, a, a prescription error. And he said, we cannot, we cannot let it go like that. And he set up Medaware which is using, using AI for elimination of prescription errors and saving uh, people's lives. So this is a, a company that has been implemented across Israel in many hospitals now and are also expanding to the global markets. MediSafe, another company, Radiology AI, Viz, which is addressing stroke situation through image analytics capabilities, working with about, uh, I think, 200 or 300 uh, providers already in the US. iMedis, another company from uh, uh, Stanara Ventures, AA Doc, Zebra Medical, and others, all of which are active in different applications, but using uh, uh, AI and image analytics capabilities for those various applications. Um, one of the things before I conclude, I want to share with you a few statements, and I know it may sound redundant because uh, it's been repeatedly shared, but sometimes examples, I'm a great believer in examples. I think examples do uh, send the message across. So as, as was indicated by the, uh, by the uh, ambassador and as was indicated by Aviv Baruch, uh, I believe also that we have to step into open innovation and knowledge sharing platforms. And just to share with you one of those platforms that I like, uh, or two that I was involved in and I, I'm quite uh, familiar with, one is the World Bank. I was a consultant and still am a consultant to the World Bank. We built a, 
a global innovation platform called Tech Emerge for Emerging Countries. And he brought in medical companies to be validated and tested and validated in India, in Brazil, now in, in, in Africa. So this is an example of an open innovation platform built by the World Bank, which really brought solutions to the Indian market, whereby uh, uh, providers in India, such as Apollo, Fortis, Max, Dr. Lyle, were not even a word, but they are, they are out there in Italy, in Israel, in, in, in Norway. And the fact that connecting those bridges helps and saves people and save obviously uh, a lot of expenditures. Another example out of the European market is a company called Induct. Induct out of Norway actually connects between 81 hospitals in Norway. And this is an open innovation platform for knowledge sharing. So for instance, in Austria University Hospital, um, they were able to reduce the diagnostic of breast cancer from 12 weeks to one week through a new technology and a new process. Once this was, this was in, implemented in the university hospital, it was shared by 80 other hospitals. So why we need to invent the wheel over and over again if this solution was invented elsewhere and now you can embrace it and implement it in your hospital and save people's lives and definitely save costs. So in that platform out of Norway is another example of open innovation and knowledge sharing capabilities across Norway, but they're active now in Europe as well as in other markets. Um, our president, former president said, for me, dreaming is simply being pragmatic. We need to not just to dream, really be pragmatic, come up with those solutions. And the, uh, one of the things that we have been doing also in, the, in, a, in, in Salara Ventures now is we're looking for solutions and more and more to invest in new solutions in digital health. We're now setting up our second fund, looking for investors to the second fund of Salara Ventures uh, uh, for the second fund, which will be focusing not just on digital health, but also on what is now being defined as bioconvergence. We are in Israel quite strong in terms of bioconvergence technologies, biology, physics, computational, um, and engineering capabilities. And this, this is the new era as well that goes hand in hand with digital health as the breakthroughs and innovations that we're all looking to adapt in the near future. With that, I, I thank you for the, uh, for the attention. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to address them. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bane, for your terrific presentation full of details. So now, um, let me introduce my colleagues for the Italian part. Uh, Mr. Porri, responsible for innovative technologies, and then Ferdinando Capece, quality and regulatory affairs of Confindustria Dispositivi Medici, who will introduce us into uh, Italian market overview. Please, Enrico. Thank you very much and good morning, everyone. I try to share my screen. I think uh, you are uh, seeing uh, the, my slides. So, um, okay. Yes. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so, so changing. Doesn't change. Okay, so Italy is the third largest uh, European country by population with a never an age of over 45 years and an expected life of over 80 years. This means uh, an increased need of, for integrative care and home care to address uh, chronic pathologies uh, to support older people with comorbidity instead of an approach uh, to a care base mostly on hospital for acute treatments. Only recently, Italy changed uh, the approach to the implementation of uh, SCARE targets from a hospital-centered approach to a territorial and integrated care-based one. We are facing an enormous challenge, but at the same time, COVID pandemic increased awareness and uh, accelerated uh, the implementation of this process. One month, is, one month ago, the Italian Scare Ministry announced as a target to be achieved the 10% of over 65 years people to be treated at home. <clears throat> now we are at 6.7%, which is in line with 6% as an average among Ox countries. This target is uh, intended to be achieved by means of telemedicine and digital health 
through the project and initiatives proposed uh, to be included in the recovery plan. And the government, that government is defining as a response to COVID pandemic. As a sector, we hope that uh, domestic assistance uh, will be one of the topics in the plan that has to be presented to Europe for approval and funding. The NHS, uh, Italian NHS is born in uh, 1978 uh, to implement the constitution of Italy in order to provide uh, a uh, universalist uh, care to citizens covered up coherently with uh, each need, uh, each person needs uh, and within the limits of the so-called uh, essential levels of assistance, which are, which is a list of services uh, that uh, has to be guaranteed to a citizen within every region where needed. The public funding provides economic resources of as far as uh, the governance of health care, the Constitution of Italy defines uh, a federalist system and gives uh, competencies uh, and some powers to the 20 regions relating to health care implementation. This means uh, that in parallel to the NHS, we have regional health care systems. Uh, at central level, state is the responsibility to guarantee citizens the same rights uh, through the essential levels of assistance. At the local level, regions have the direct responsibility of the execution, the management of expenditure to reach as objectives of the country, the management of resources and purchases. Uh, uh, so regions uh, define also local legislation and governance for services and activities and the finance the localized units and hospitals. To achieve uh, the same uh, regions are financed yearly by public central funding based on the national budget law and the regional expenditure of the previous year. Dealing with uh, SCAR, the concurrent uh, legislation is a quite relevant expert as far as the coherence of approaches to care in the country. For operative aspects, equity of access to medical services and to innovation and uh, reimbursement tariffs to hospital for both uh, public and private, uh, uh, for public and, and private health. As care services to citizens are mostly provided by public health, the public expenditure in as care in 2020 is expected near to uh, 120 billion euro, which is a uh, 3.6 higher percent higher than the previous year, and increased uh, due to the pandemic and the related uh, to address it. The ratio between uh, public health expenditure and gross domestic product is 6.4%. Uh, the private health expenditure covers around uh, another 2.5% of the GDP. And uh, both ratio registered no variation in the last uh, few years. As uh, Mr. Ambassador said uh, before, the Italian market of medical devices uh, in uh, to, uh, 2008 uh, has been estimated in over 11 billion euro, which is around 7.4% of uh, total healthcare expenditure and around 190 euro per capita. This uh, per capita value is 12% uh, lower than the average in Europe and the near half of uh, uh, Germany per capita expenditure. The Italian market of medical devices companies uh, for uh, two thirds uh, mint uh, to NHS, the public health, and one third uh, to private health. Confindustria Dispositivi Medici represents an industrial sector numbering around 4,000 companies in medical devices, both national and multinational, mostly small, medium enterprises with over 70,000 employees in a sector that counts uh, 1.5 million of different medical devices. 
of uh, half of the companies are medical devices manufacturers and invest yearly over the 6% of uh, their revenue in R&D. Although there are relevant scientific and clinical competencies in the country and consequently research uh, activities and clinical trials uh, in the, aimed uh, to new product uh, development, there is uh, still not uh, a governance of innovation at the country level based on uh, as technology assessment, the HTA. This uh, sometimes causes fragmentation among regions in terms of uh, market assets requirements and approaches uh, and uh, inequalities uh, of access to innovations among people living uh, in uh, different regions. Regional uh, uh, federalism gives a certain level of independence uh, to region on else, but uh, on the other side, sometimes put in conflict uh, the two levels, uh, central and regional. In these terms, uh, the management of pandemic showed uh, some limits of this approach to be addressed in the future. Uh, quite briefly, medical devices export from Italy in 2017 was more than 5 billion euro with an increase of uh, plus 4.7 percent than the previous year. Such an increase was after eight years on a raw positive trend of exports. As you can see in the slide, also medical devices imported to Italy in 2017 uh, increased over 3% compared to the previous year. As far as Israel in particular, uh, Central Europa Research, the chair Institute estimates export of medical devices from Italy to Israeli around 40 million euro in 2017, with an increase of 23% uh, compared to the previous year. As long as the period, uh, um, as a long period trend uh, during the last years, the revenue in medical devices sector in Italy, both medical devices and uh, in vitro diagnostics, slightly uh, decreased uh, with different trends depending on specific subsectors because of the increased uh, centralization of purchases in medical devices, the lowest uh, price standards the spending review and the threshold to purchases in uh, medical devices uh, fixed by government uh, in order to reduce the expenditure of public administration and consequently the level of uh, public debt uh, of the country. Here in the slide, uh, the last year to year trend available. 2020 was deeply affected by the pandemic Nevertheless, uh, the increased needs of end purchase of, of uh, specific COVID related medical devices, such as uh, IVD COVID tests, uh, masks, gloves, uh, choreographers, and ventilators, might balance uh, the reduction of revenues in some sectors quite significant due to the stop uh, of surgeries and of uh, non-emergency interventional activities for a period of time, which uh, affected also screenings and uh, preventive diagnostic during uh, the lockdown. As I said before, Italian government is working on a recovery plan, which is a strategic plan for development and infrastructures of the country that will be financed by mean of uh, 209 billions, uh, billion euros uh, coming from the uh, so-called next generation EU funds, part as a In a period of two years, recovery plan may drive a growth of GDP between five and, six, uh, five and seven percent per year. Uh, per year and would cover uh, different sectors, including uh, Dealing with the scare, it was announced that the Italian plan might cover, among other hospitals, restructuring and uh, modernization. The reduction of aging profile of technologies and electromedical equipment. 
reorganization of integrated care and development of uh, care by means of uh, connected technologies and digitalization of healthcare. In particular, as uh, uh, the medical devices national trade association, we consider an important point to be addressed the obsolescence of uh, electromedical devices in public and private hospitals. <clears throat> As in other European countries, uh, there is, uh, this is a long time matter. As far as Italy is still relevant, the number of devices with an age of over 10 years uh, for imaging, like PC, RAM, and uh, X ray equipment, and electromedicine uh, devices, in particular ventilators uh, and uh, monitoring. Further resources specifically devoted to healthcare may arrive from the European Financial Stability Funds for Healthcare, another specific line of debt uh, coming from Europe. We call it in Italy the MES, uh, which is still unclear whether the government will reflect or will uh, replace. In order to approach uh, the scare market in Italy, it is relevant the typical process of purchasing adopted by NHS, which is coherent with the the procurement code and requires goods and services to be acquired mainly by mean of tenders with few exceptions as uh, shown in the slide. Uh, master agreements are defined in procurement code and allow more than one contractor as long as the rotation criteria is applied. But, uh, but uh, master agreements are still rarely applied to medical devices in Italy. The procurement code also defined the public and private partnership purchasing model, the so-called PPP, to enhance financial capability, capacity in case of uh, complex projects uh, or public works, but uh, it is practically, practically unapplied. During the last decade, both uh, at the regional and uh, central level, uh, purchasing groups have been uh, created in order to be, obtain uh, scale economies. Uh, the increase of centralization of purchases in medical devices in order to reduce the public expenditure, increase the importance of economic appraisal of the tender in detriment of technical and quality appraisal. As a consequence, as a consequence, uh, Italy registered a reduction of uh, diversification of products used, the standardization of needs and products, and the strengthening of dominant market position for the selected bid in case of long period uh, convention contract. Although the late payment uh, European directive improved the situation, the, the these uh, sales outstanding are still a problem for public healthcare suppliers. As an average, is uh, it was uh, still uh, uh, 108 days uh, to be waited be before uh, being paid in uh, 2019, instead of the 60 days uh, that the line defined by law for a scare supplier. This means that the amount of revenues to be paid by public administration to medical devices company was around 1.9 billion euro, less than 2 billion. Let's focus uh, briefly on uh, now on the digitally, digital ads market in Italy. The pandemic showed that, that digital is key driver for the scale of the future within the country. Digital health market in Italy is around 1.8 billion euro. As, uh, as from figures by Net Consulting Cube, the market uh, is expected to re register this year an increase over 2% compared to 2019. Notice that only a small increase of the expenditure was due to new products and uh, the relevant part of, of this expenditure was devoted uh, to keep operative the system uh, to manage pandemic. Next year figures talk about an estimated increase uh, over 4%, uh, bringing the dimension of the market to 1.9 billion euro because of new developments and new projects uh, that will be mainly managed uh, through tender. 
the expenditure in uh, digital ads per capita last year was uh, 30 euro. If you consider, as said before, that expenditure per capita um, in medical devices is under 200, uh, is lower than uh, 200 uh, euro. You understand that today, considering both medical devices and digital ads, we are talking about less than nine percent of the total expenditure per capita in Italy, which is uh, around uh, 2.5 thousand uh, uh, euro, far from being uh, too much. As far as uh, the approach to digitalization, till now in Italy, there was a great fragmentation more region dealing with new project and uh, purchases of IT solution and absence of a coordinated plan. Although there is an appropriate uh, governance devoted to this expert and strategic approach, there is National Agency for Digitalization, the so-called AGI. The Ministry of Health Care, which is also competent authority for software as a medical device, Ministry of Innovation, and guidelines for telemedicine since 2014, the National Digital Agenda, the Strategic Plan for AI. Nevertheless, during the last months, these regions mostly approached the management of pandemic by means of local level initiatives and projects. This resulted also sometimes in problems in terms of interoperability and cross references of the relevant data. Regions, single hospitals, and other local entities developed or acquire the different IT, IT tools, databases, and the solutions to implement uh, remote assistance, to manage contract, uh, contact uh, traceability to prevent spread of an infection, and uh, to monitor infected people. Altems, which is the Alta Scola of Economics for Healthcare uh, Systems, counted. Uh, during the last month is 180 digital solutions adopted in Italy to assist patients on remote for treatment of chronic patients and now solutions used to reduce the waiting list for treatment and diagnostic that significantly increased during the lockdown. Recovery plan will be a great uh, opportunity for the country to approach the new healthcare in a strategic and coordinated way. Digital is one of the pillars, healthcare one of the priority sector that will mean exactly is not completely defined, but uh, infrastructures and technologies are a driver of change, as said before, and uh, will need uh, to be part of it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Enrico. Um, I will add uh, that in order to put on the market the medical devices in, uh, in Italy and more in general in, in Europe, something not relevant uh, at regula uh, regulatory le level is changing for companies and of course uh, for their products. So therefore, thank you, Enrico. And I leave the stage to my colleague, Ferdinando Capece. Yeah, hi everybody. Can you see the screen that I'm just about? Yes, we can. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Let me, let me put it on. There you go, sorry. So hi everybody, uh, I'm Ferdinando Capece, the Quality and Regulatory Affairs Manager of Confindustria Dispositivi Medici. Thank you for the invitation. And let me walk you through the main regulatory requirements for the Israeli and the Italian market for medical device and individual diagnostic. So that's, that's my unit. That's what we're doing for, the, for, the, for this year, according to the emergency for the the coronavirus and all the support we provide to our members. So what's happening in Europe? 
um, we had two main uh, regulations that were adopted in 2017, and they were changing 30 years of uh, previous uh, legislation for medical device and computer diagnostics. So you can imagine how big the change was and the, how huge the impact will be in the future to get market on the device uh, according to the next, to the future regulatory uh, system. Um, what's the goal of these two new regulations? So basically the aim was to implement stricter controls, especially for uh, higher medical, uh, high risk medical devices. And this uh, was, was done, will be done through a reinforced uh, role of the notified bodies who, for, who, who are these third independent bodies designated by competent authorities uh, to release the, the certificates to put a device on the market. And um, more controls even thanks to the more clinical evidence that are required to manufacture to support the, the, the mechanism, the mode of action of the device they want to uh, distribute to put on the market. Um, the second goal of the new regulation was to modernize after 30 years the regulatory system and this uh, is reached by a new classification system for especially for IBDs for in vitro diagnostic uh, but for medical devices as well with more rules for post-market surveillance so it means what how the device is doing on the market how users are finding the device and with the extension of the scope, including other devices that were historically considered other product, like the aesthetic device, so the, the device that basically have no medical purpose. Last and third, um, the scope of the regulation was, the, the, the goal of the regulation was to uh, implement some transparency measure, especially with the development of a Udemed database. So a unique uh, European database where notified bodies, economic operators, and manufacturer will have to Im upload all the documents, uh, the relevant documents uh, regarding the, the device. And we have the implementation of a new barcode, the unique device identification system, coordination between EU authorities and other specific measure for specific devices. So where we are now, we are in the middle of a transitional period because the medical device regulation will apply next year in May and the in vitro diagnostic regulation will apply in 2022. Um, it has been a strange transitional period, let's say, because usually in this time, economic operators have the time to comply with all the new uh, requirements. But um, this didn't happen because the commission in the meantime was supposed to implement some critical infrastructure for the new system to, to work and something that didn't happen. So all the delay that was caused by the virus, but even before the virus, is resulting in a difficulty to put on the market new devices. And so basically the system will rely upon the legacy devices, which are the devices that are currently marketed under the, the directive, which is in, in some cases uh, will be extended the validity till uh, 2025. But that's not the, the solution to the system, let's say. Um, so the critical infrastructure pillars, uh, what, what's lacking to the system to be fully operational, to be fully working, is the low number of notified bodies. So for the moment we have 21 for the, the, for the, for the next system. And, and just to make a brief comparison, for the moment we have 45 designated under the directive. So for the moment the capacity is more than the lesson in the, the we have problem regarding the certification of products. So we, as I said, we will rely on the legacy devices. And, um, and since it's a new, it's a completely new regulatory system, we need more guidance, authorities, notified bodies, manufacturer need uh, new guidance in order to understand better how to implement all, all these new requirements. And it's something that, um, that the commission is doing, but it's, I mean, it's laid on this side as well. As I said, the new um, central European database, Udemed, which was supposed to be fully operational in uh, March 2020 this year, has been postponed to 2022. We don't have scientific bodies, which are these panel expert, expert groups, which are supposed to help manufacturers in providing the scientific early advice for high risk devices, which has not been established yet. We don't have implemented acts and still the harmonized standards, so the international standards, the ISO, uh, which will have to be harmonized according to the new system, 
are still waiting to be uh, postponed to harmonize. So the state of the art for the moment refers to the directive, which uh, will be void next year. So as you see, there's still a lot of things going on. There's still lots of critical aspect pending. And as industry, we are asking institution to, to move forward to help us, I mean, uh, to, to get a real transition for this, for this product. But how does it work to uh, put a device uh, on the market in Europe? First of all, you have to classify the device um, according to the risk class, uh, to, the, to the rules you can find in the regulation. So depending on the risk, which will be one to A to B and uh, three, depending on the risk related to the use of the device for the user and for the patient, you have to follow a specific conformity assessment procedure. And, and for the medium and high risk devices, you will have to involve a notified bodies which uh, will have to go through all your documentation, your clinical evidence, and, uh, and to release the conformity procedure, uh, the DSC certificate. And so you will be able to market your device. Uh, after, after decided the, the risk class, you will have to follow the general safety performance requirements, which are stated in Annex 1 of the new regulation, which is um, a sort of checklist uh, stating all the um, fundamental characteristics that your device uh, must have depending on uh, its, I mean, its specific type. And of course, by the type, you will have to follow the technical standards which provide the state of the art for the technology. After that, you have to develop all the technical documentation uh, stating exactly all the characteristics of, uh, of the device and uh, the clinical evidence, the, all the evidence supporting the, the mechanical mode of action the, of, the, of the device. And you will have to include labels and instruction for use. These are generally requested in the, in the language of the, of the member state you are distributing your device. After that, you will be able to uh, affix the C marking on the device which you can see in the, in the right side of the, of the slide. And the manufacturer will have to draw up the declaration of conformity, which is a declaration uh, with which the manufacturer declares that he complies with, a, with the relevant directives, with the technical standards, and he puts the device on the market under his own responsibility. Then as an organization, you will have to implement a quality management system according to the ISO 13485. And especially for Italy, you will have a local additional requirements regarding the, um, the registration of the device on the Ministry of Health database. So what's the situation in Italy so far? Um, basically, the situation is, um, is managed by Brussels. It's a European procedure. So um, we are waiting basically for, the, for Europe to solve all the issue and then to start implementing on a national level what's provided on the on a, on a European level. Um, we have the national uh, nomenclature which will be implemented, which has been chosen to be the, the next future European medical device nomenclature. And probably the main problem so far uh, regarding the Italian context will uh, concern the compatibility between the two systems for the registration of device. So how the European database UDEMET and the local Italian database will work and how the registration will effectively uh, carried out by the economic operator with the aim of um, basically avoiding a double registration which is just burdensome and doesn't add anything on a security level. What's, um, and to make a short comparison with, uh, with Israel, so uh, all the medical device uh, marketed in Israel must be registered with the, with the authority the AMAR. Um, AMA recognizes all the um, approval, all the authorization released by five countries, which are part of the International Medical Device Regulators Forum, which are Canada, USA, Europe, Australia, and Japan. And usually the license is aligned with the, with the certificate provided by, the, by those countries. Um, and this registration on the, Israeli, on the Israeli territory must be done by a local authorized rep uh, representative. So an Israeli registration holder, which is something similar to the authorized uh, representative in Europe for a uh, manufacturer that doesn't have a physical, uh, physical headquarter in Europe. 
Israel accept the classification of uh, these five areas, so even the, the risk classification uh, carried out in, uh, Europe, in uh, Europe, Australia, and Japan, and Canada. The, 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 generally, the documentation is required to be submitted in Hebrew. Some official documents, like the certificates, does not be, um, do not need to be translated in, in English. And if the device is specifically intended for uh, be exclusively used by a professional user, so healthcare operator mainly, there won't be need to translate label and instruction for use as well in, in Hebrew. So basically, AMA requires uh, the, the, the main documents which are required in Europe, in Europe as well. The, we're talking about the CE certificate, the declaration of conformity, the quality management system, libels in EQ, and the technical documentation. There's some additional requirements for, for devices where we apply to, to Israel, which is a barcode for the trustability of the lot. The approval of the Israeli Standard Institute for some electromedical devices. The fact that the device must be listed in one of the four major funds, the SIP funds, and the vigilance agreement between the local agent and the manufacturer, defining responsibility between the parties to uh, ensure the prompt reporting of incidents and regulatory compliance. So just a quick recap before I, I finish the presentation. Um, for what concerns the CMARC, it is accepted by both systems, Italy and Israel. Uh, both systems require the label and the instruction for use in their own language. They require a quality, the existence of a quality management system by the organization. They require the device registration in their own uh, database. And, and for some part, I mean, it's compatible as well. You will have to be represented by an authorized, uh, by a local agent, which will be an Israeli registration holder, means an unauthorized representative in Europe. As far as you don't have a physical location in Europe. So this is, was very briefly the regulatory uh, requirements between those two systems. Uh, if you have any question, I'm happy to, to answer. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Ferdinando. And thank for the great presentation, plenty for us to think about there. So now uh, to stay on time, if you agree, let's move on to the questions. So if you have any question, please feel free to write or ask the question directly to the speakers. But I had a question for Mr. Barney, actually. It was very interesting, your presentation. Thank you very much. And I was wondering uh, how the, the development stage of the device you presented is. So how they can be possibly ready for the Italian market, for the European market, I'm sorry. Mr. Baruch, we were not able to see and hear you. The teacher okay. is talking to me. Okay. <laughs> here we are. I'm here, I'm here. Patricia? Yeah. And sorry, uh, Ferdinando, could you could you please repeat the questions? Probably. Yeah, the, the, the question was addressed to, to Mr. Barnia. Ah, sorry, 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 yeah. sorry. So it's it's but my yeah, it's sorry, my sorry, mistake. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry. Sorry, okay. Mr. Barnia. Sorry. Asaf, are you on the line, Asaf? It was regarding the the device he showed in the in his presentation. It's very interesting technology, and I was wondering. If, whether they are ready for the for the European market. Okay, <clears throat> I will reply to you as soon as uh, we're off. I'll speak to Asaf. You remember which device was it? Was there his presentation included a few uh, few examples? Yeah, but but it was much more general question about how the regulatory stage. I mean. Generally, most of the. Um, 
product that Asaf has presented in his presentation are already um, ready to market and have been marketed in different locations around the world. So specifically, uh, we'll, we'll connect you immediately after the call uh, to Asaf to communicate by emails. Will that be okay? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Is there any other question from the speakers or the speakers? No other questions? So if there is any other question and then you can write uh, a question through the organizers if you uh, need to have more informations. And um, all the, 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 the webinar today will be sent as well as the uh, presentation and the slides. So please feel free to contact the organizers to, uh, to receive the materials of today's webinars. So if there is any other questions, I would like to uh, thank you for having made time out of your busy schedules to attend this important meeting. Today we talk of the two uh, different ecosystems, Italian and Israeli one, both characterized by the healthcare system, healthcare professional and scientists, the political institution and government and companies. And all of them deeply uh, involved and focused to guarantee the citizens the safety, the best healthcare and assistance through the competencies, technologies and drive innovation. We try to stop and look at the scenario that the COVID pandemic is deeply influencing and changing. And there's an enormous challenge, as we said before, for safety of the people, and, but also an opportunity to rethink our present and improvement of our future. So I hope you appreciate this initiative aimed to give a better knowledge of our countries, our healthcare systems, and our medical devices industry may contribute for further cooperation between the, the, the two countries and, um, and the industries. So let me thank again the Italian side, the Italian embassy and the ICE colleagues, our Israeli partners for um, Israel Export Institute, my colleagues and all the participants participant who hopefully will turn into reality the foundation we have laid today together with our partners. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Great Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.